another episode of Greg Goes Electric. This is part two of the battery box construction. Now in this episode we're covering the design, the fitment, as well as the assembly of the battery box and the installation of the battery modules and their related components. And last we're going to cover the installation of the completely assembled and functional battery box into the vehicle itself. Now, when we designed this battery box, uh, we did so with a few objectives in mind. One, uh, we wanted all 16 modules in a centralized location. Uh, that's to uh, reduce the risk of having to run high voltage cables throughout the body or the frame rail of the vehicle and and then you have the run the risk of high voltage cables getting pinched or or shorted or grounded where they're not supposed to. Uh, two, we wanted all 16 modules inside of a, uh, a durable enough enclosure that they could reduce uh, resist whatever uh, harsh environment that the uh, owner possibly could subject them to because this is going to be used as an off-road vehicle. Uh, three, we wanted to have them in a, a type of enclosure that could be removed and installed easily. We accomplished that by repurposing the motor mounts that the original ICE motor uh, used in the vehicle. So the battery box is basically sitting in the exact same location that the uh, ICE motor sat in when it was in the engine bay. Uh, and last, we wanted to mimic the weight and balance of the original motor and transmission. So with this method, we were able to do that by shaving about uh, 100 pounds off uh, with this design. So uh, we didn't have to alter the suspension or, uh, or chassis uh, for this conversion. And the vehicle uh, handles just like it was designed to when it was built uh, originally, originally from, the, from the factory. So I'm going to cover the design of this uh, battery box a little. So the material of the box itself is 8th is inch steel. We went with that gauge because that uh, proved to be uh, sufficient protection uh, for the uh, for the modules. It won't buckle under the uh, movement of the truck and under the weight of the modules themselves. And uh, also the weight of the modules and that uh, thickness of steel proved to be a good weight in comparison to the uh, ice motor that we removed. Now, as far as the orientation goes, you'll notice that there. 16 modules inside. There are 10 that are oriented uh, vertically and 6 that are oriented horizontally. That is simply because that's the best way we could come up with to, f to fit all 16 modules in the engine bay. And if you uh, look closely, you'll see a 3-inch uh, recession. Uh, the modules sit in about 3 inches from the edge of the battery box because that's the uh, space we needed to uh, fit the uh, connection between the between each modules because we had to extend the uh, uh, terminals out about two and a half inches so that we can get our uh, bus bars as you uh, that we call them they're really just uh, two watt cabling uh, that are soldered to lugs uh, so that we could fit all of that inside the uh, battery box enclosure and also have our our I think it's called UW UHM plastic uh, strips that we use as uh, protection for from arcing and uh, and so we had to fit all of that inside and also uh, seal and close the uh, front of the battery box off so uh, that's why we have a, a three inch gap on the uh, on the front side between the uh, modules and the edge of the box on the on the electrical side of the battery box now earlier in the video we mentioned that we solder our cabling to the lugs and we do that because uh, in our experience over the years with in the automotive industry, we realized that a lot of corrosion happens right at the, the battery terminal, right where the uh, cabling meets the lug. So by soldering instead of crimping, you reduce the amount of uh, corrosion that happens and your, your connection will last for a, a good amount of time when you solder in, instead of crimp. Now we're on to the opposite side of the battery box. This is the thermal management side. This is the side where the glycol circulates throughout the uh, water jackets in the modules. Now there's only about an inch and a half clearance because that's all we need on this side. Uh, the glycol comes in through this port, circulates throughout the water jacket, and then comes out of this port here up top. 
Now the inch and a half of space between the uh, edge of the battery box and the modules are there to accommodate these uh, nylon coated rubber tubes that carry the glycol from the uh, inlet and outlet ports on the uh, on the modules to the uh, manifolds. Now these are the manifolds. Uh, their primary function is to distribute fluid, in this case glycol, uh, from the water pump uh, that glycol then builds pressure or builds up pressure inside the uh, manifold itself and then it distributes that uh, glycol uh, evenly to all the modules via the uh, rubber tubes that uh, are connected to the manifolds via the uh, uh, gold looking uh, barbs that are sticking out of the top of the manifold. Now bear in mind that one manifold is an inlet and the other manifold is an outlet. Now we created these manifolds by how, uh, machining out a solid uh, cylinder uh, of aluminum till it uh, has about a quarter inch thick wall uh, and then we redu put a rubber reducer on it from three inches to two inches and on the two inch side we uh, put another reducer which is a, a large bar that is the receiving end of the uh, glycol from the water pump. Next we drilled evenly spaced 3 16 holes in the top of the cylinders and uh, then we tapped uh, threads in so that we could uh, screw our barbs in. All right, so this is how this is going to work. This is a uh, cover plate slash manifold housing. The glycol is going to get circulated via this water pump. All right, it's going to come out of that uh, half inch tube. All right, once it comes out of the half-inch tube, it gets uh, circulated through the radiator, comes out of the radiator into another half-inch tube, goes into the bottom of the manifold, builds up pressure inside that manifold because it's going to be in an upright position. Afterwards, then it comes out of each of uh, those uh, 16 barbs evenly. All right, from there, it go, it can, it, it's going to get sent into the uh, m uh, module via these rubber tubes. Once it goes into the modules, then it gets circulated through the water jackets, all right, comes out of the outlet side via the tubes, goes back over to the inlet side of the uh, manifold, and from which then it uh, comes out into the uh, half-inch size, which then goes back into the water pump, and then it uh, cycles over and over again. And that's how the batteries are either, or the modules are either heated or cooled. So we're at 380 volts, 
you divide that by 16, it's about 23.75. So each of these carry about 23.70 to 23.75 voltage. So uh, it's a success. Thank you.